1966, the unthinkable happened. A Ford car defeated a Ferrari at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And this is the story of how that happened. Ford v. Ferrari, directed by James Mangold, starring Christian Bale and Matt Damon. And <laughs> unbelievably wild ride. Incredible movie. Really fun watch. And taught me more about racing than I'd ever thought I would want to know. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I definitely don't care about cars. I don't at I all. still don't. No. But I'm glad I learned this a little bit. Yeah. It's, yeah. An, it's a really cool story about the little guy, you know, taking on the big guy. And, and the little guy happens to be American, yeah. so, you know. Happens to cool. be Ford Motors. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, there's a British guy driving, so that's cool, right? Regardless, I really enjoyed the movie. I, uh, oh, yes. It's so much fun, and of course we had to do a bonus. So here we are. I'm Connor Zagari. And I'm Austin Johnson. Welcome to Filmgasm. Ford v. Ferrari. has been out for a while. Uh, I know we're a little behind the curve on this one. But, you know, it's tough for both of us to get to see these movies sometimes. we got to, you know, circumstances get in the way. Yeah. And we won't do these unless we've both seen them. Correct. Yeah. And from what it looks like, it's still, like, doing well in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> really successful <laughs> which, film. Which doesn't surprise me because I think they timed it correctly. It came out early November. Yeah. Um, and here we are recording it mid-December. Yeah. Uh, great timing because you got the holidays, rolls into the holidays. What do families do in the holidays when they're bored? Let's go see a film. Uh, Ford vs. Ferrari is one that is for everybody. You know, uh, you can take the family out to see it. You can go on a date to see it. You yeah. can go see the shit by yourself. Uh, it's it's just fucking awesome. You know. Yeah. And Christian Bale and Matt Damon are both still very good at drawing an audience. Yes, big names. I think both give incredible performances. Matt Damon, especially yeah. best work in years. Yeah, and I think it's made close to like two hundred million by now. Yeah, about one hundred eighty-five. Nice. Yeah, on a solid. budget of uh, what one hundred ninety-seven million. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, pretty good. That's yeah, that's awesome. That's you know, for a it, biopic about a '60s racer, <laughs> not bad. Yeah, no, it's it's gonna make money, and you know, you, you, we saw it's up for some Golden Globes. Uh, recently just one. Saw that. Only uh, Christian Bale. Yeah, was not nominated. some. Yeah, just Christian Bale, which I I thought Matt Damon was stellar. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe we'll see differently at the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. Again, I, the Oscars I think will give them more nods than the Globes did. So I hope so because this was yeah. this is gonna get some technical stuff for sure. Yes, indeed. <laughs> right on. So I guess we should start with a little bit of backstory about yeah. what this movie's about. So this movie focuses on car designer Carol Shelby and volatile driver Ken Miles and how they're recruited by Ford Motors to help build a car that is capable of beating Ferrari at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the big European racing uh, you know, European race that yeah. Ford never fucking has a chance in. Yeah. Because Ferrari has dominated for the past, like, five years. Yeah. And the movie is about the car they built, the relationships they form, and ultimately defeating Ferrari, which really happened. It's the only time it's ever happened that yeah. an American car won the Le Mans. And, yeah, so what do we got about Carroll Shelby and Ken Miles? Anything? Like, any kind of Oh, backstory? Carol Shelby, you know, at... People would be surprised, you know, the Shelby Cobra, you know, it's a name that I don't think people quite realize was a person. And now we've seen this movie, you know, shed some light on who this guy was. And he was a total badass. Uh, if you've seen the film, you know, you, you see Matt Damon's got the cowboy hat, the sunglasses. That was very much Carol Shelby. I've seen, looked up some pictures, did some research on the guy, the accent, he nailed it. Um, all of these things, the mannerisms, that's how he was. He's very much a go-getter, very textbook American, you know, uh, oh, yeah. a guy who's all about the American dream. He's a good old boy. Yes, and stepping up and, and wanting to, you know, take down the giant, like you said. And he was my, a racer. Yes, that's my yeah. favorite thing I was going to point out, yeah. is that he, he knows what it's like to be behind the wheel. Yeah. He's raced in these races. Uh, he, knows, he knows what it takes, and uh, he had some, some health issues that caused his heart rate to go far too high when he was going at that uh, 7,000 RPM. <laughs> Did, <laughs> didn't he win Le Mans? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, he did. Yeah, he did. And uh, my gosh, what it's really cool to see a guy take a step back and kind of coach, you know, and kind yeah. of be, kind of not, not be totally behind the wheel, but definitely under the hood. It's almost know? too perfect 
for this to have actually happened. Yes, I, it really, it's like, it's, it's textbook American yeah. Dream. It's I know, awesome. it's, it's crazy. awesome, it's great. Oh, I love it, yeah. And then uh, Ken Miles, this guy, man, you look up like footage of him, you know, I, Christian Bill kind of nailed it as well with the mannerisms again, the accent. Both these guys, I think, did their research. You can find things on YouTube, um, you know, interviews with them and that, those sort of things, and I'm sure that's what they did. <laughs> a very funny guy. Definitely threw shit around. There's 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 footage of him, you know, throwing his helmet and stuff at people, and that's great. You know, it's just fun to see a movie, like you said, uh, you know, with t two stars, a good supporting cast, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, uh, James Mangold, who's a established director, yeah, uh, a one hundred million dollar budget, and it and it fucking delivered. You know, this is what we. This is great. When you go out to the movies, you're like, you, you feel good. You're like, they spent their money. They made this awesome thing. And I get to go see a story that I knew nothing about. Yeah. Um, and so this race, uh, 1966, like Connor said, takes place over two days because it's you know 24 hours. So it's the so it's uh, the 18th of June and the 19th of June. It's not the nicest weather, you know. Um, oh no. Uh, during the summer. So this is the 34th uh, annual of this ex of this exact race. So uh, there's already some establishment, like you said. Um, Shelby had already won this, uh, and this is a very highly anticipated thing especially in the 60s in the 70s uh, not as much now as it was then but this, this is the height of you know ferrari exactly and the european race exactly. car and exactly. james bond's car and all that mm -hmm. and they, yeah. they bring that up in the movie how ford is boring yeah. ferrari is sexy <laughs> yeah ken miles is like yeah whatever yeah <laughs> it's hilarious it really is great man i, I i'm i'm glad this was made i'm really glad i got Me to too. see it I love true stories, Me and too. more so, I love true stories I've never heard of. Yeah. Because they're always way more fascinating. And then when you do the research, you're like, oh, yeah. wow, they really stuck to it. It's that's a little a, piece of awesome. history we get back. It's so cool. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, supporting cast includes John Bernthal as oh. Lee Iacocca, oh. famous uh, Ford mogul. I knew that name. Lee Iacocca. I'd heard yeah. that before. Yeah, me too. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> John Bernthal's the man. John Bernthal, fuck yeah, I love him. He's great. So much. That guy Everything he touches is that gold. That guy delivers. He's, he, he's, the reason I started watching Walking Dead was because of him. And I stopped when he died, you know. <laughs> so, you know. He's the biggest reason I watched The Punisher. Oh, yeah, yeah that too. Yeah. yeah. So great. And he's still one of my favorite characters in Wolf of Wall Street, still. Oh my gosh. Write yeah. your name down. <laughs> <laughs> Supply and demand. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, he's the coolest dude. He's a, one of my favorite character actors working today. Yeah. I've seen him in interviews, and he genuinely seems like a decent guy. Yes. He's really happy for his success. Yeah. Like, he, he he's like, feels lucky to be an actor, which is yeah. cool, right? Isn't that nice? Which is funny, because he plays such volatile yes. pieces yes. of shit so often. He's like, oh, I'm just lucky to do this every day, you know, to just have this job. Like, yeah. that, how refreshing is that? That's nice. So great. Gotta love John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited to see what he does next, because the guy really, he does a great job picking his scripts. Unlimited range, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he does a great job as uh, Lee Iacocca, the guy who's really, he, he comes up with this idea to have... Ford build a car that can beat Ferrari after Ferrari uh, throws them some shade. Because Ferrari, you know, they don't give a fuck about Ford. <laughs> Ford's old news. Ford is, you know, the little boxy cars that drive in America. Ferrari are the, you know, hand-built, super sexy spy cars that dominate Europe. So, like, <laughs> Lee's plan initially is to try to get Ferrari to make a deal with them and Ferrari's like I piss on your car like just crazy shit <laughs> it's funny <laughs> I love that that's great cause, cause it's not totally not the whole film isn't like just like Americans 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 there is like ha huh, you fucking Ford get the hell out of here you know there's there's that there's like that too where it's kind of both sides where you're kind of like haha I don't know. I, I like that. I like that it's not totally biased, you know, no. because that's not how it was in real life. Yeah. I mean, you're, you know, Ferrari was the king. Ford's racer is a, is an Englishman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, because Carol Shelby said Ken Miles is the man for the job. Oh hell yeah, we're gonna make history. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and if that don't work, for sure as hell nastier. <laughs> uh, uh, Kytrona Balf plays uh, Ken Miles' wife. 
Molly. Awesome performance. Great performance. I love their relationship. Me too. It's so even. I love her relationship with Carol Shelby too. Yeah. When they're fighting on like the lawn across the street and she just gets her lawn chair and puts it out and drinking soda. Oh man, that's great. Yeah. I love when she goes to get, get them Cokes and Ken's like, not, not, don't get him anything. <laughs> not for him. <laughs> she comes back. With oh, go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> She was, um, she's Claire in Outlander, for those of you who follow that show. Um, I do not. I probably should. I have heard good things. I've heard good things. My grandpa started watching it, of all nice. people, and he loves the show. That's great. I never would have thought that. Good for him, yeah. <laughs> found, a, found a good show. That, that's, that's rare for me these days to find a show that I'm, like, really into. I just don't have time to commit to anything anymore. Exactly, yeah. It's hard for me to, like, really give it my all. Yeah. I'm much more inclined to give... Uh, two-hour movie. If only we could just quit our jobs and do only this. <laughs> <laughs> One day. So then we got Josh Lucas as Leo Beebe. Uh, complete piece of shit, our bad guy. Relentlessly piece of shit. And Josh Lucas did a great job because he plays a piece of shit really well. He, he does. does. Probably because I think it's, it comes a little naturally to him. I've heard he's a little difficult. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me one yeah. bit. He was supposed to be a big star, but around Poseidon, he crashed that bridge. So, yeah. <laughs> Josh Lucas, uh, perhaps best known, well, not best known, but the only film I remember him in is 2003's Hulk as Glenn Talbot. And... Uh, I could go on about Hulk, but this is not the time nor the place. No. We'll get there one day. <laughs> and admittedly, you know, for the performance, Josh Lucas does a great job. I, his character's just such a fucking asshole. Yeah. No, it, it, these are the kind of roles he needs to be, yeah, he needs to be taking. Yeah. There's some, I, I looked into the story, and uh, BB's idea to have the three cars stop at the same moment, that fucking happened. He really yeah. did that shit. Yeah. Ugh. We'll get to that part of the story later, yeah. but yeah, it is. Yeah, Ugh. fuck that guy, man. <laughs> Tracy Letts plays Henry Ford the second, and he plays him really aggressively. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how accurate this portrayal of Henry Ford the second is, but fuck, it's great. <laughs> I really enjoy it. He's a real ball buster. Yeah, but then again, you know, I mean, that's that's a hell of a legacy to live up to. Basically, the man who, who invented the car, yeah. for the most part. The like, American car. The yeah. American car. The assembly yeah. line. The man who helped build America into what it is now. His kid runs Ford now. He's got to have some pretty wild ideas. <laughs> I love that. Regrettably, the scene where um, Shelby takes Henry Ford for a ride didn't happen. Ah, yeah, not true. That sucks. That was like, fun, It's though. like my favorite part of the movie. That was but really it... funny. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> ah. Tracy Letts also appeared in Lady Bird, uh, The Big Short, The Post, and he's going to be in Little Women. Yes, he is. Yeah. He, dude's good. I've never heard of him before today. Awesome. And uh, I think that, that about covers it for the cast. Anyone, everyone we uh, think yeah, that point, not really. Yeah, that's about it. So let's talk about it with the, uh, the film. Oh. One more thing. James Mangold, director. Oh, yeah. Walk the Line, Logan. Yeah. Guy's really coming to his own. Yeah, seriously, man. Uh, he's, like, really consistent. And I've heard him him talk, and the, the guy's, like, extremely dedicated to... Oh, shit. I didn't know he did 310 to Yuma. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. That's probably my favorite one, yeah. God damn. Uh, <laughs> besides this, I don't know. This might be my favorite of all of his movies. I love 310 to Yuma, though. Yeah. That was uh, my first Western... Probably mine too. Yeah. Probably mine. Yeah, I, I was saw like, that. I was is, young. This is something else. Yeah. Oh my god. What have it I is, found here? It is incredible. God. Yeah, but Man- Mangold is like also doesn't know anything about cars like us. He just did a tremendous amount of research and is a really good director. So he did his thing. Oh hell yeah! Incredible stuff. This is like no CGI. No, it's all stunt cars, stunt work, and racing. Yeah, it, it is pure. It's like cinematic. Like ah yes, it's real satisfaction. Oh yeah. hell yeah. It's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so cool. Ugh. So there's also a documentary on Netflix about this event. 
and uh, it's called the 24 Hour War. And I haven't watched it yet, but honestly, this was such an engaging story that I think I am going I'm to. I'm going watch to that. for sure. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of upset I haven't yet. I wanted to before <laughs> we recorded, but. I don't usually watch documentaries. I like a story driven thing. Yeah. But I, w- I do make exceptions, and I think this is going to If be the story good. already has intrigued you, yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the, I think the last documentary I watched was uh, the Amazing Jonathan documentary on Hulu. Oh, yeah, which yeah, yeah. did not paint him in a flattering light. No, not at all. Good God. <laughs> so, Ford v. Ferrari has a IMDb score of 8.3, which is great. That's yeah, very good for yeah, IMDb. And a Rotten Tomatoes score of 92%. This was a big success all around. Yes. Critical success, fan success, commercial success. Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> Indeed. So let's talk about the movie. So we begin in 1963. The Ford Motor Company is not doing well. They're strapped for cash. And Henry Ford walks in, shuts down production, and says, we need ideas, and the man who gives me a good one keeps his job. Shit, man. The president of the company walks in and tells everybody, you're fired unless you get me something good. That's pressure. (laughs) And the man who delivers is Lee Iacocca. And he tells Henry Ford II that he should try to buy out Ferrari as a way to boost their car sales and participate in the 24 hours of Le Mans. But Enzo Ferrari walks out of the deal because he gets offered a better deal with Fiat. So he was basically using Ford to up his price with Fiat. Yeah, of his face value. And by rejecting the deal with Ford, Ferrari straight up insults Henry Ford personally and says, like, you're a fat, arrogant American who makes ugly cars. Yeah. Like, damn. Basically. <laughs> Ugh. Don't get personal with millionaires or billionaires. They will pay to fuck you over. Yeah. Power. <laughs> yeah. Power hungry. With power comes, like zero restraint in any form or fashion no matter what it is in your life no grace no grace just constant fuckery (laughs) it's kind of amazing I want fuckery money where I can just spend thousands you know what I'm gonna sue you for no reason at all that's amazing to me oh my god (laughs) I mean I gotta you know rethink my finances when I gotta pay my $40 water bill if I could just throw away you know, I go buy the fucking water company and then like sell it to Germany if I wanted to. It'd be great. Yeah, it's amazing. It'll never happen in a million years. But I love watching, you know, stories about these people. Yeah. Because this whole movie happened. It's Because Henry Ford was a bitter fuck. <laughs> he didn't like how someone talked about him behind his back. It was not behind his back. It was pretty damn straightforward. Well, yeah, but he wasn't, even, he wasn't even in the same country. No. Yeah. But he said, you go tell. Yeah, yeah. It was a message. There was no secret here. It was a message, yeah. Oh, so great. <laughs> uh, so, Henry II orders his racing division to begin to build a car that can beat Ferrari at Le Mans, which is next to impossible, because Ferrari has dominated for years. This would take... This would take years to yeah. figure out. This is a, a big fuck you project. <laughs> so many, the more I think about this, like, damn. Yeah, it's incredible. How many things in, in world history have happened out of sheer pettiness? <laughs> Probably more than we can count. Yeah, yeah. If, were, if the movies were actually, yeah. They were on screen. The stories were on screen. So great. Ugh. So, for this task... Lee Iacocca, who's been put in pseudo charge of this, there's not really it's not really clear who's in charge of this project. No, Henry Ford, really, and he sends Lee Iacocca to go get Carol Shelby, the owner of Shelby American, and a race driver who won Le Mans in 1959, but then had to retire due to health issues. He's a heart condition, so he wants Carol Shelby to build this car, and Carol Shelby wants Ken Miles. To race it for him. And Ken Miles is hot-tempered. He's a mechanic. He's struggling. And he's an incredible racer. 
The guy yeah. knows more about how a car feels than anybody on the planet. Yeah. It's actually kind of incredible. It's, it's so cool when he's like, if you can feel it breathing under you. <laughs> Talking about the car, like, you know, just the engine, and you're like, man. I can listen to Christian Bale talk about cars all day. It's amazing how fast he shed the vice weight. But yeah, that guy's unreal. Yeah. If he does it again, he's going to kill himself. Yeah, he's, he's like an international treasure. Yeah. That guy. Incredible actor. He's a damn good actor. This is like... Just another thing, you know, whereas most actors, this would be their best performance of their entire fucking career. Yeah. And for Bale, it's like, yeah. Isn't that a, incredible? It's just another one. God. Just another one where I disappeared into nothing and you forgot who I was. Yeah. Shit. Again. It's, it's amazing. He does it every year. I mean, yeah. it's like every year. It's really, a, yeah, we've gotten used to it. <laughs> we didn't really talk a lot about both those actors' accolades. Let's take a little segue here. Christian right. Bale won his first Oscar for The Fighter. Yes. And... What a performance. I can't lights out. Yeah. <laughs> He's been nominated additionally for American Hustle and Vice. I think that's it, right? I, th- I, th- I am pretty sure it is. I'm going to look it up, but yeah. yeah. Talk about Vice uh, because, you know, we feel pretty strongly about that. Vice. Oh, yeah. We've mentioned that before we started this version of the podcast. But for those of you who've been following since the real beginning, let's go back in time. <laughs> Vice came out last award season. It's the story of Dick Cheney and his rise to power. And Christian Bale plays Cheney in a a performance unrivaled. It's It was the most incredible transformative role I've ever seen for, like, uh, I guess for that time, for that year. Yeah. And he... He deserved that award. Uh, yeah, undoubtedly. Yeah. There, I, I don't feel that strongly about there. You can look back at some years, but last year, you said it best when we first talked about it. It was uh, you said Rami Malek was acting as Freddie Mercury. Huh. Christian Bale was Dick Cheney. <laughs> Damn uh, straight. And he does that. Again. That's my point. He does it over and over. He was also nominated for the Big Short. <laughs> The big short, yes. yes. Four, so four nominations all together. Yes, of course. And uh, one win. Yes. And I anticipate, I, I, I think he'll be up again. Probably. He's the only actor to be nominated uh, for a Golden Globe for this. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And, he, you know, of course, he also played Batman in the Dark Knight trilogy. He's been a frequent flyer for uh, Christopher Nolan, appearing, appearing in The Prestige. And, yeah, the guy's just a goddamn rock star who transforms into... You know, every role he's ever done. Yeah. And he's, he's great. Really great. There's a reason he's an A-lister who, like Austin said, this is just a drop in the pond of his career, whereas it's a ripple in anybody else's career. Yeah. That's a, that's incredible. Matt Damon, he won an Oscar for screenwriting for Goodwill Hunting alongside Ben Affleck. He also got nominated for Best Actor in that role. And he was also nominated for... The Martian. Correct. And... I, there's two more. There's two more. Shit. <laughs> We're doing this just off one, the top one of right them. Head. One of them is weird that you're not going to get, but the other okay. one is an acting one. Fuck. Matt Damon was also nominated for... Actor in a supporting role. Actor in um, a supporting role. movie came out in 2009, so at the 2010 Awards. 2010 Awards, 2009. Fucking hell. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> with Morgan Freeman? Morgan Invictus. Yeah, Invictus. Invictus. Ah. And, and then he was uh, nominated because uh, he produced Manchester by the Sea. Ah, that's okay. the best picture of the year. Yeah. Of course he did. So that's a different one, yeah. Um, yeah, man, he's awesome. <laughs> Matty D. Yeah. His big blockbuster franchises, the Jason Bourne movies. Of course, The Departed. The Departed. I mean, um, I'm very partial to Rounders. <laughs> Rounders. Huge, huge Rounders fan. Talented Mr. Ripley. Um, what else, man? He... Um, the Oceans trilogy. I, I for one, love that he's, like, willing to just be like, I'm Matt Damon, I'm going to be cool, and appear in, like, Ragnarok and Deadpool 2. Yeah. And Euro Trip. This guy he doesn't know. Uh, all that stuff is really cool. Um, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Y- yeah. Applesauce, yeah, bitch. His, his, <laughs> one of the coolest supporting roles of all time, certainly of this past decade, is Matt Damon's work in Interstellar. Yes. You're, like, just, you don't know he's going to be in it going into the movie. Yes. And when you see him and you're like, 
Matt Damon's an asshole? What? <laughs> when the fuck has this guy ever just been a complete, like, just complete piece of shit? You know, even The Departed, you're like, <laughs> it's kind of douchey, but I, you know, but this is like, oh my god, like right away, you're like, fuck this guy. He's he's the villain, man. You know, uh, yeah, he's great. You know, he's he's like an American hero. <laughs> he keeps getting <laughs> he keeps getting stranded in space. Yeah. Oh, we didn't even fucking saving Private Ryan. Oh yeah, that one gets lost in the mix, doesn't it? <laughs> Jeez, dogma. Like the guy's oh, Contagion's a fun movie. Contagion, yeah. I like that one a lot. Um, what else? We're forgetting some. The Informant. I love the informant. He's hilarious in that. <laughs> yeah, no, he's awesome, man. He's like got like 10, 12 roles that are really cool, that are great. So, yeah. Uh, good he actor. Has. And he he brings it in Ford v Ferrari. He really does. <laughs> one of my one of my favorites of his. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, Shelby and Miles, they test the Ford GT40 prototype at LA International Airport. And they, uh, this, that's when Miles meets BB, right? And he says some, he says some shit about the Ford's new car that BB designed, and that starts a feud that lasts the whole, the whole movie, last years. Yeah, he's like, it might look cute on the outside or whatever, but on the inside, that's just a pile of shit. Yeah. It's just a Ford. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. What are you going to charge people, you know, like? You're gonna make people, you know, go bankrupt just for your stupid car that doesn't even work that well. Wow, <laughs> Christian Bale. I love that scene when he does that. He just breaks it down. Yeah, he just doesn't stop talking. You're like, oh, stop. This guy. I love it. I love it. I think it's hilarious. Anytime Bale gets to do that, it's just fun. You know, he's always, he's so good at talking really fast when he gets to use his British accent. He actually gets to. It's great. It's actually surprisingly rare how often he's allowed to do that, too. He's, yeah. He's yeah, rarely no. British. We rarely get to see him do that. Like, just, like, be British and just talk shit about something and tear it apart for, like, two minutes. And that's fun to watch him do, because, you know, like you said, he's Bruce Wayne or, you know. He's one of the biggest parts of why I love The Prestige so much. Oh, man. The Prestige. Oof. That is a great movie. We are going to do that one day as a yeah. full episode because that's fucking, oh, yeah, it's, it's genius. It's incredible. <laughs> that's one of the coolest first time watches, you know? Yeah. It, just, it hits you. Every time I watch it, I, I see something new. It's yeah. so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> but, what, but when, you know what I'm talking about, when that first, oh, yeah. Dude. It's great. <laughs> Y'all watch Prestige because that's coming at some yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> it's a crazy movie. Oh. So, BB says, look, Miles is not a Ford driver. So Ford wants to have... He doesn't quite embody the American uh, the American way. God, these fucking suits. Ugh. And so he wants to have these other two, uh, you know, Ford kiss asses race Le Mans instead. And as Ken Miles predicts, none of the Fords finish the fucking race. Because Miles knows what he's doing. And Henry Ford sees this as a crushing defeat. And... <laughs> he asks... Uh, Carol Shelby goes to talk to him and says... Look. The GT40... Made... It reached 218 miles per hour before it broke down. And that scared Ferrari. So Ferrari knows what Ford is capable of. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be on the run. And Ford, it's like, hmm, maybe the right person, maybe you're the right person to take this project over. Maybe they should be listening to you. And he tells my, uh, Shelby to go to war. <laughs> I love That's that. a great scene. This is when he's like staring out yeah. the window and he's not really looking at anybody in the eye and he's just holding like a little glass of whiskey. I want you to go to, go to war. <laughs> it's awesome. What I, the creepiest line though is like this isn't the first time Ford Motors has gone to war. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> There's a lot of implication in that sentence. <laughs> I want to know that story. Be, I love to be sitting on that couch, just like you guys are evil. Oh God, <laughs> dude, the devil wears a suit. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes he does. Ugh. Of course he does. <laughs> Crazy. So Shelby is now given a lot more leeway over the car project. He he has Miles reinstated as the driver. And they start developing the 
new model, the GT40, and Miles is almost killed when the car's brakes fail during a test drive. Foreshadowing, regrettably. But uh, he gets out of the car before the car explodes, and his son is now super paranoid that he's going to die in a car accident. <sighs> like, it's emotional. Yeah, I mean, that, that adds a whole, yeah, whole other... Because yeah. this is the first time that his son sees him as vulnerable yes behind the wheel you know he's a goddamn rock star when he gets in a car but this time the car betrayed him and could it happen again yeah and in his line of work yeah it most certainly can when you're going 200 and fucking 30 miles an hour yeah in an untested car <laughs> yeah ugh crazy the kid who played Peter did a really good job he did a damn good job yeah I'd love I'd love to see what else that that lad can do his name is Noah Jupe He's in Honey Boy. Really? Yeah, that's the guy who plays uh, Young yeah, young Shia in Honey Boy. Good year for this kid. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great one, too. Yeah, I'd say so. Awesome. So, in 66, Ford Senior Vice President Leo Beebe takes over the racing division with the ah. intent to continue the program without Ken Miles. Because, God forbid... You, it's, it comes back to petty rich assholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ken Miles is a guy who doesn't need Ford, and BB doesn't fucking like that. <laughs> this is when uh, Henry Ford II goes to visit the development, and <laughs> Shelby locks BB in his office and goes and gives Henry the, Henry Ford a ride. Yeah, in the car. And it's fucking great. Oh, it's such a great scene. I love that part, yeah. Takes Henry Ford like 200 miles an hour down the track. Gives, almost gives the guy a fucking heart attack. Oh, oh. And he's just sitting there like, you know, Barely and breathing. just starts sobbing. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, it's so great. God damn. Oh. <laughs> 200 miles an hour. And Shelby says, look, Ken Miles knows how to control a car like this. And I'm going to make you a deal. If Miles wins the 24 hours of Daytona, he's, he can, he'll, you got to let him race at Le Mans. If he loses, then you own my company. So Shelby puts all of it on the line for Awful. Miles. For Ken Miles. Doesn't tell him either. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't either. No, that's that kind of pressure? Fuck. Yeah, no. Just, just go race, man. Yeah, just, just win. I think Miles would care. <laughs> oh, he's going to win no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so great. He's like a unbelievable athlete, this guy. You know, Ken Miles in real life. Just a relentless competitor. Yeah. Hall uh, of Famer. Like, win, 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 win. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Love people like that. Yeah. And I love people like that in movies, you know. There's people who in, in history who were put on this earth to fucking dominate. <laughs> They were good at... To seek and destroy. They found what they were good at, and they kept going <laughs> nonstop until they took that shit over. Until they beat themselves. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like Michael Jordan is just one of those yeah. guys just like, fuck. <laughs> fuck. And Ken Miles, like, I, I'm not afraid to put his name in that, that kind of category where he just was relentless over and over. Yeah. Different tracks, different races, different cars. <laughs> Fuck it, I want to win. <laughs> I don't. I don't drive the car. The car drives me. <laughs> yes, I, I'm in control here. Yeah, that's great. Ugh. So, Shelby American enters Daytona, but BB has a second Ford entered with NASCAR team Holman Moody supporting it. So he has another car that's there just to fuck with them, because he doesn't want Miles winning this race. Because if Miles wins this race, he's racing Le Mans. And BB doesn't want that. God, I hate this son of a bitch. I get heated just thinking about this guy. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> so glad what happens. Ugh. And the, the Holman Moody team has quicker pit stops, but Shelby has Miles push his car's limit to 7,000 RPM. And he wins. Miles wins. Yeah. And it's tense. <laughs> and it's great. You see you see his son, Peter. Yeah, let's throw on the... Ra you know, it's just yeah. like, it's chilling. Yeah, it's so cool. The race. I love the, like... Writing down on the chalkboard and like yes. just ha holding it over the mm -hmm. railing while the cars race by. You got to look for your guy. Like, yeah, ugh. you never see so like that cowboy hat. Yeah. yeah, you're looking for Shelby's cowboy hat. You never see the like the logistics, the little things that go into these races. 
And this movie does this so well. It teaches you how this all works. Yeah. Because I knew dick about racing before I, I watched this movie. My, my, my knowledge went as far as Talladega fucking Nights. <laughs> yes. Ricky Bobby was the uh, only no, racer I, I knew. Like, I like the movie Rush a lot. That was really good. Well, I that's, see Rush. That's very different from this. Yeah, yeah. This, this is like... Rush focuses more on the rivalry. Ford yes. Ferrari focuses more on the race. Correct, yeah. And I heard uh, Sean Fennessy of The Ringer say it best. He's like... Ford vs. Ferrari is the most under-the-hood movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Oh, yeah. It is like, you you feel, like you said, you feel, you kind of feel the motor, you feel the engine, and you, when Christian Bell's talking about it, when Ken Miles is talking about, like, oh, you got to let it breathe sometimes, and then you got to push it, know when to push it, know when, know when to, like, let off of it. You know, it's just, like, amazing. He, he's talking about himself. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Yes, it's incredible. It's, like, really good dialogue yeah. in this. And it's about cars. What I loved is that I never felt like an outsider. No. I no, always knew no. what was going on. Everything made sense to me because it's a smart screenplay. And when, which we're about to get to, when you get to Le Mans, you were like, oh, God. Buckled yeah. in, like, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Because you look, at your, you, you, you look at your phone, you're like, good God, there's still like an hour left of this movie. Yeah. It's two and a half hours long, but it goes, it flies by. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It flies by like a Ford car. It's like a six Le Mans. Yeah. Going 7,000 RPM. <laughs> it made me feel like a 12-year-old, this, this movie. It's fucking At awesome. At times, yeah. I was just like, yeah, like, cars. <laughs> I've never felt this before. Because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a Fast and Furious guy. You know, I'm not. So it, yeah. this, this is like, to me, this is my first, like, I really felt it. Fast and Furious. I like those films because they're ridiculous. Yeah. But it's, the racing's it's bullshit. Yeah. This yeah. is real. I was just talking, talking about that 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 that, yeah. that that loud that you know underbelly like vroom. yeah the vroom yeah yeah of course this, this is like yes yeah. this is how it should be done <laughs> cool I bet I hope this starts a trend because I like this kind of racing movie like me too Le Mans interesting in, like very interesting place I'd like to go I'd like to look into that mm-hmm yeah oh my gosh yeah <laughs> can you imagine going to that. I would not want to go to that. Well, not the whole time. I would love to go to. <laughs> I would not want to spend a full fucking twenty four no, hours. I'd want to go to like the tail, the last like three or four hours. You know, go to the tail end of the race when it's during the day, the next day. Yeah. <laughs> so Le Mans, we go to Le Mans because Miles won the race. Yeah. And as soon as the, the fucking it starts with Miles having a broken door. Jesus Christ, what a bad omen. He can't close his door. <laughs> the first lap of the race, he just... It, it, I was laughing so hard. He's driving 200, 300 miles an hour. <laughs> with Come on, you trying fucker! To close the door with one hand. <laughs> he come, when he comes back in, the bloody door won't go! <laughs> and then Phil, the team engineer, just takes a hammer to the fucking door. Just clashes it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Miles takes off and starts setting lap records while catching up with Ferrari. It's fucking awesome. The guy, yeah. <laughs> he breaks like three or four records yeah. in this boom, one race. Boom, boom. It's amazing. And he, he starts racing with uh, Ferrari driver Lorenzo Bandini, who's piloting Ferrari's new prototype. And Miles experiences brake failure, and he has his brake system replaced during his pit stop. It's insane. That does not happen. No, oh, no. The pit is for you know, like you know, new tires, gas, like little things. You, for you to yeah. like get and get water or you, something. You don't yeah. usually swap out the fucking brakes. No. And That's they try that. to stop him. Ferrari's pit crew is like, you can't do that. And Shelby's like, you fucking show me. You show me where. Show I me that where. Show me in that yeah. damn handbook, bro. <laughs> you show me where can't do it. Come on now. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Sounds like fucking Boomhauer. It's fantastic. <laughs> I've always wanted it if they did a live action. Of King of the Hill, he'd be Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon has to be there as someone. I don't care who it is; he's got to be there. Him and McConaughey have to be oh, there. Oh hell yeah! Everybody else, I don't, I don't, I don't quite know, but those two have to be there. <laughs> oh, it's great. So yeah, they just they replace the brakes, and <laughs> Enzo Ferrari's like no, but Shelby convinces the race officials that it's legal. They looked into this, which is odd because they it's almost like they knew this was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So Miles and Bandini start dueling on the road until Bandini blows his engine, eliminating Ferrari from the race. So, shit. 
the Fuck Ford, this. in this moment, the Ford engine is more powerful than the Ferrari yes. engine. And the three Ford cars that are driving the race are in the top three positions with Miles in the lead, like heavily in the lead. And that is when BB brings the idea to Henry Ford that wouldn't it be swell if all three Ford cars had a photo finish crossing the line at the exact same time. Ah, I like that. Yeah. That sounds nice. These fuckers have never been behind the wheel of a race car. They don't know what it's like out there, but they're making the decisions. I fucking hate that so much. That's un-American, man. Incredibly. You don't stop. Like, you know, you were just talking about, like, competitors and people who, like, keep pushing, keep going, keep fighting. This guy's like, no, slow down. If you are in the lead of Le Mans, or any race for that matter, the last fucking thing you do is slow down. If I'm playing you in Mario Kart Double Dash, I'm not slowing down. Yes! God damn it. Fuck you if we play Mario Kart Double Dash. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, yeah, you're racing. If we're having Come a on. goddamn foot race outside, I'm not slowing down. Yeah. <laughs> if we're trying to say the fucking alphabet faster, you know? I want to win. Ugh. Ken Miles wants to win. And BB orders Shelby to tell Miles to do this, to slow down so the other two Fords can catch up and let the press have a three-car photo finish. <sighs> and Shelby's like, are you fucking asshole? Like, don't, don't do this. Don't Please take don't this do away this. from Ken Miles. And, but Shelby, he tells Miles, like, look, this is what BB and Ford want. And Miles is like, are you, are you serious? Are no. You, what? You what? Your damn mind. But, he's, you know, he's still setting lap records, and he's almost done with the race, but he decides he's going to do it for, for Shelby. He's going to play ball with Ford so Shelby won't suffer the consequences. Yes. So he slows down, and he lets he lets the other two Fords catch up with him. They cross the line at the same time. Or so they thought, because ultimately, McLaren is declared the winner on a technicality because he crossed the finish line just slightly before Miles did. Miles loses the race. Ugh. Unbelievable. The fact that nobody punched BB really pissed me off. Like, I wanted that guy to be, like, just held down on the... But then, but then it's like, Ken Miles and Shelby are just the bigger men. They are, because they just, like, like, we know, know what, what we did, and they walk away. Well, and Ken Miles, you know, uh, you know, was, like, obviously grateful for the opportunity, and, yeah. and, was, and was, like... He got to race Le Mans. Look, man, people know what I did. They saw what I did in those laps. And his, I loved when his son says, that's a perfect lap. <laughs> oh, man, I get the chills. Because he, he explains to his son that scene when oh, they're on the tarmac. It's like, man, and he's talking to his son about, like, you know, going around. He's, like, talking about the laps. And you go through here, go through, you know. And he talks about a certain time. He's like, that's a perfect lap. And he does it. He actually succeeds at what he was trying. That's what he was trying to accomplish the whole time. See, I want a perfect lap. I want to do. I want to do this. This so-called hard course as perfect as I can, as perfect as anyone can. And he didn't. His son is like the only one who really knew that that was going on. That's so powerful, man. It's awesome. Even Shelby didn't quite know like about that. Oh no, that dynamic. You know, the son was like a whole different. You know, it's a whole different realm. You know, their relationship is so special, father and son. And for him to like recognize that and to have that moment is so cool. And for us to have it too, like be on that journey is. Is really special, really rewarding. I can't imagine being so obsessed with something that it literally it fills your entire life to the point where you are using the perfect lap as a way to teach your son life lessons. Like, yeah, it is everything to him. I that's amazing to me. I, I hope one day to be that ingrained in something. It's amazing. Yeah, and then to be able to. Pass like kind of not not necessarily pass that down, but pass that ideology down of like being committed to something, being dedicated to yeah. something, and being like want wanting to be perfect at something. What better way to like reach your kid than finding out what they want or what they like to do and their desires, and like saying, "Hey, you you can totally do this if you if if you love it enough and care enough and put in the work." Like that's 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 like the best thing in life, <laughs> you know. To be able to sit behind the wheel of a car. And just instinctively know exactly what's wrong with it. Like, this needs to be, you know, over there. And still yeah. win. And still yeah. race extremely well. Like, knowing what, yeah, it's just incredible, man. 
it's a it's a huge feat, you know. Like it's yeah, I'm I'm so glad this movie was made to get these people these people's story and their names in like our minds, the audience's minds, you know. That's great. That's something to be grateful for. <laughs> oh, for sure. Two months after Le Mans, Miles is testing a new car at Riverside International Raceway, and the brakes fail. This time he is not so lucky, and he is killed in the crash. Six months after that, Shelby goes to, to talk to Molly, Miles' widow, and his son, Peter. Gives Peter a wrench that Miles threw at him before winning a race at Willow Springs in 63. Ford and uh, Shelby gets a little choked up, thinking about Miles. It's a really sad moment. Kind of a bleak ending. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, yeah. they couldn't ignore it. Ford would continue its winning streak at Le Mans in 67, 68, and 69, becoming the only American car manufacturer to win the race at Le Mans. Miles would be posthumously inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame in 2001. And that's that's Ford v. Ferrari. Solid flick. It's really solid flick. I, and I really think that that ending and how honest they were in actually showing it and you have Shelby running to the car. You're like, wow. Very powerful. Changes the dynamic of the movie completely. Because uh, you, you always leave with that, whatever that lasting imprint was. And so you could have left, could have ended the movie at, at the end of the race and being like, oh, all right. And then showing a little, you know, like in the credits showing like, and then he died, you know. But no, they showed it on the screen. That was their ending. Like, that's what Mangold chose to be the ending. And I, I thought it was a really ballsy and great move. Yeah. Because it puts the movie on a different level of I, I think when you're that honest and that upfront about the story but I, I have nothing but respect for this movie you know I, it's, it's amazing it's it doesn't really come out of nowhere either you know it's set up earlier on mm -hmm. with his initial brake failure it, yes and he tells his son constantly you know like anything could happen but I'm gonna try not to let it happen to me yeah but it's not always in your control <laughs> no most of the time it's not when you're going that fast it's up to God like you're out man yeah yeah. <laughs> it's oof. But I hope that this movie brings Ken Miles, like his name and his accomplishments, into more people's heads. Yes. Because, yes. God damn, he won that race. One of the best athletes of all time, man. Fuck yeah. Just insane. Go look up, just go on Wikipedia and look up Ken Miles. Look at his accomplishments, how long he did it for. Yeah, this guy's a freak. He was a freak of nature behind the wheel. Uh, yeah, I love this movie. It's awesome. It's a nine out of ten for me. I close to a ten. I really enjoy it. Um, I think I, I think it has a chance to, to like win best picture. Um, I think it has that. I really hope it gets nominated. I do too, man. I do too. Um, I think it has that kind of like weight to it, where it's not this. It's not this giant, giant production. But it's not small either. It's kind of meets you in the middle, and it just. It's a movie goers movie. Oh, hell yeah. it's so entertaining. So funny. It makes you, like, cry. It gets all those emotions out on the table with racing, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I adore it, and I think, yeah, Matt Damon and Christian Bell are just great. It's great, great stuff. They don't skip a beat, so awesome movie. Right on. Likewise, I give this film an 8. I really liked it. A couple more viewings probably go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, it's just, it's a solid film to watch. It's a great story of just, you know, American accomplishments. The American dream come to life. Yeah, yeah. The, the American dream, in a way, I, I would like to see it on the screen. Yeah. You know? You know? <laughs> Ford, it's not often that multi million, multi million dollar company Ford Motors is the little guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> but this is one case where, yeah. Under these circumstances, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that about wraps us up on Ford v. Ferrari. Fantastic yeah. movie. Highly recommended. Check it out. For sure. You've got to see this, man. Yeah. Is this still in theaters? Yes, it's still playing some places. It should be for about another month or so because it'll run through Christmas for sure. It came out November 3rd, so yeah. Um, and it'll be out on DVD and digital soon after that. Yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm going to go pick this one up. This was a good watch. Me too. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I could definitely see myself rewatching it a few times. So Kick ass. Well, thanks for listening to this awesome bonus. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what we got this week, but I bet it's going to kick ass. Who so. knows? Yeah, the lineup <laughs> is always great. <laughs> Take it easy.